Praise the Lord, everybody, if we could be making our way to our seats. What a wonderful way to start off a new year, being in church, lifting up the name of Jesus, worshiping with us. Amen. So thankful to have everybody here this morning. I got a passage of scripture that I felt like the Lord needed me to read this morning, and it's 2 Corinthians 12, 9 and 10. And it said, And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasures in infirmities, in reproaches, in necessities, in persecutions, in distresses for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then am I strong. When I learn to depend on Him, when I learn to lean on Him, Brother Blake, when I learn to trust Him, when I put my trust in Him, Brother Ronnie, it's almost like a point uh, that we read footprints in the sand. The man asked the Lord, he said, in my most troublous in times, in my most fierce trials, there's only one set of footprints. And the Lord told him it was at that time that I carried you. At that time, it was that time that I carried you. So if you're going through something this morning, just know that God is on your side. Now our strength comes from him. Can we lift him up and praise him this morning? Hallelujah.
voice, shout unto the Lord with a voice of triumph. Come on, come on. If he's brought you out of darkness into a marvelous light. Come on, the song says he changed my name. If you've obeyed the gospel, if you have repented of your sins and you are buried with him in baptism, baptized in the name of Jesus Christ and receive the gift of the Holy Ghost, why don't you shout unto the Lord? Why don't you thank him? Oh, because before the gospel, Before the gospel, I was headed to the grave. The Bible says the wages of sin is death. Oh, but he turned my life around. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. The Lord is in this place this morning. Oh, it's not hype. It's not hype, Brother Britton. I remember the first time I stepped foot in this church and I heard our pastor preaching. I knew it was real. Nobody had to tell me. Nobody had to tell me that Jesus is in this place this morning. If we could get the ways to give on the board. We're going to go into tithing and offering this morning. Ways to give are Givelify, PayPal available at Riverbend Pentecostals. Cash and checks can be mailed to Riverbend Pentecostals, P.O. Box 477, New Madrid, Missouri, 63869. Gold pans are for tithing. Wood is for offering. And you can text to give at 833-883-9311. Um, this is just faith. It's just faith. You know, I, I, Brother Shannon, I've experienced many blessings from this, but I experience blessings from this every single day. I, I get up in the morning and I do little things. I get in the shower, Brother Shane, and I begin to thank the Lord for hot water. And sometimes, Pastor, the Lord kind of has a sense of humor, I think, because I was just this week, my hot water heater went out. But you know what? You know what? Katie and I thank the Lord that it happened this week and not the week before when it was freezing because the enemy... He can't get the victory. He can't get the victory. But when I begin to name all my blessings that the Lord does for me, when I begin to thank Him for, you know, I, I, I pay my bills. You know, I, Sister Maria, I have a home. I can open my Bible and I can get in a prayer room by myself and not be persecuted. My faith increases. And then all of a sudden, Brother Brenton, cancer, not a big deal for my God. I need a financial miracle. That's nothing. He supplies for me every day. It's faith. So this morning, why don't you say this with me in faith, believing that the Lord can save your family. The Lord can turn my situation around. Amen. Let's say it. Upon the authority of your word, I have given, and it shall be given unto me, pressed down, shaking together and running over. I am a tither, and I give my offerings. I bring them today into your storehouse. Therefore, the enemy is rebuked. The curse is broken. I live under an open heaven. You pour out upon me such a blessing that there is not enough room to receive it. We receive jobs and better jobs, raises and bonuses, sales and commissions, benefits and settlements, estates and inheritances, interest and income, rebates and returns, checks in the mail, gifts and surprises. Bills paid off, debts demolished, and royalties received. My whole family saved and serving God in perfect health and abundance, walking in divine favor and blessing. I am blessed going in, and I am blessed going out, and all that I do will prosper in Jesus' name. And the church said...
What a place to be to bring in a new year. Hey Amen. I don't know if I'm the only one, but it's exciting to be in the house of God this morning. Hey Amen. From the time we started meeting to the time we're here right now, I felt faith just continue to rise. Faith is in the building today. Amen. And I don't know what you left behind in this past year, but I'm here to tell you that this is going to be the year that we've never seen a revival that has come, that is going to come. I'm reminded from uh, youth, uh, youth Congress a few years back, the entire theme of it was this is that. And our pastor just preached last week, this is that, which was spoken of by the prophet Joel. That in the last days I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. I believe that this is that. That this is the year. Come on, we've been talking about it for years. We're seeing glimpses of it. But there is a revival that is coming to this area. There is a revival that we have not even begun to see the vision. We've, we've experienced loss this year. We've experienced trials. We've experienced problems and, and circumstances. We've experienced division. But we've also experienced unity. We've also experienced financial blessings. We've also experienced revival. We've also experienced new faces. We've also seen recovery grow. We've also seen our youth grow. We've seen our children grow. We have seen everything in the midst of COVID, in the midst of problems, in the midst of loss. We're still grown. We're still here today. Nothing has brought us down. We've not been killed. We've not been down and out. The enemy may have thought that. He may have been down counting. But we stood back up. We stood back up and we said we are not going to be out. This is that. This is that. And I know it's time for prayer this morning. I want to do things just a little bit different. I feel like we, be, we get stuck in the flow of things too. And we begin to say, oh, if you need a miracle, come to the, full, come to the front. We'll lay hands on you. If you need a miracle, it's still in the house today. But I want to have focused prayer for just a moment. And if you're up here in the front, I want you to go back to where you're sitting. And I want everybody in this place to join up with the person next to you. And we're going to pray for them and with them too. Because we're a church that is unified. Come on, we ain't going to have revival if we're not unified. I want us to pray a covering over 2023 and not a covering of just protection or a covering of this or that. I want to pray just specifically for a covering of anointing, an anointed year, that this is the year that God wants for us, that this is the year that if he needs me to step out of my comfort zone, this is the year I'm going to do it. If this is the year that I need to be a minister, I'm going to do it. If this is the year that I, I need to do something for my church, I'm going to, maybe I just need a Bible study. Maybe I just need to grow in my spirit. Maybe I just need a fresh outpouring of the Holy Ghost. But I want us to link up and I want us to begin to pray for the person next to us and to pray with them that the church will flour flourish this year, that we will see revival together. Pray with me. God, I'm coming before you with a thankful heart. God, because in the midst of every trial, in the midst of every pain, in the midst of every loss, in the midst of everything we've experienced in 2022, God, that we've made it here. We are still standing. We are in this place for this reason, for this purpose, for this generation. We are chosen. We are a royal priesthood. God, and I'm praying that we will flourish, that the kingdom of God will flourish, that we will see unity like we've never even seen it before, that we will see our brother and our sister rise up, that we will see them rise up, and we will see ministries flourish, that we will see unity flourish, that we will see finances built up, that we will see people that have experienced loss that are given back to this year. I pray for blessing. I pray for outpouring. I pray for the anointing to be covering over 2023. God, everybody that's watching online, everybody that is tuning in, everybody that is in this community, God, I pray that they feel right now what we feel in the house this morning. I pray that the Holy Ghost will go forth and that it will change generations, that it will be outpoured, God, upon every person, not contained into this building, but God, going out of this building, going into the streets, 
going into our schools, going into our jobs. I pray that it's outpoured from us, God, and let it go forward and do as it was supposed to. I pray that the word of God will do as it's supposed to. I pray that we be ministers of the word, that we will go out and do what you want us to do this year, Jesus. Let there be a liberty go forward from here on out. God, let there be a liberty to worship. Nothing's going to hinder my worship. No valley is going to stop me from raising my hands. No loss is going to keep me from standing up. Nobody is going to keep me from lifting my head toward heaven.
Based upon what happened in this place Wednesday night, uh, it's a revival of something, something called I don't ever want to go home from the presence of the Lord. There was an old song came to my mind just standing here a while ago, and I'll try to think of it with King of Glory playing in my ears. It says, when I think of how he came so far from glory, came and dwelt among the lowly such as I, to suffer shame, such disgrace, on Mount Calvary, took my place. To an old rugged cross he'd go, but who am I? I didn't do anything to deserve being in his presence today. He didn't come because I was good. He came because it was his idea to be with me. He came because he came to earth, wrapped himself in flesh, lived, died, and rose again so that we might enjoy what we're enjoying today. Please don't think, this did not come cheap. It's free. It's free, but it, it's not cheap. It's beautiful. Who am I that a king would bleed and die for? Who am I that he would pray, not my will, thine for? Who am I? Welcome to 2023. Are you glad to be here? Huh? I'm glad to be here. I'm so glad you're here. Thank you for coming to worship. To all of our guests, we're so glad you're here on this first day of the year. And we want you to know you're always welcome. Because you make us better by being here. Amen. We're better because you're here. Amen. 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 This is beautiful. This is beautiful. I have a word from the Lord. When she calls back to the mission, or when y'all text her or talk to her, y'all tell Nikki that she confirmed this word today, Thursday night, in recovery class. Yeah. She decided to take a break from the mission yesterday. I'm saying that by faith. Yeah. Uh, I'm not bashful. I hope she's watching. Uh, but she said in recovery Thursday night, I want to learn to laugh like Miss Jane laughs. Aww. And I had read a passage of scripture that just like blew me away, but I didn't connect the dots. But as soon as she said that, I pulled my phone out, which I don't recommend doing in recovery. <laughs> but I had left my iPad at home. And I just, this, this message just began to, to flow. 
Um, and uh, so you're going to think I'm a little crazy in the beginning. Y'all probably already been thinking that. <laughs> Y'all have been with us in men's meeting this morning. Y'all really think I'm crazy because uh, the vision that the Lord has given us. But I'm, let me say this. Um, I sometimes feel like I'm all talk about vision, but that's what I'm supposed to be. I'm supposed to download it in you as the Lord gives it to me and then turn you loose to see it happen. That's what the book says. For the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, to edify the body of Christ. That's how you're built up by going to work. Amen. God bless you. Let's pray together. Lord, we love you. Thank you for your spirit, for truth, the power of the Holy Ghost. Make the ground ready for the word. I pray that the seed falls on good ground. I pray, Lord Jesus, that you will let me receive everything from this word that I need. Let it be planted. Let it grow up, become fruitful. Let the word build faith in me, give birth to faith in me and those that are here. Let there be nothing in me that would hinder the flow of the word. And I would receive it, the power of the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Before you're seated, this message is 2023, the year of laughter. And you can be seated. <laughs> Laughter. It is almost always a reaction to something. Something or someone said or did something or somebody looked a certain way or something struck me a certain way and it causes me to laugh. And then... If you're like me, it'll cause you to laugh over and over and over and over. I was telling the men this morning, I love Jerry Clower. Anybody know about Jerry Clower? Bunch of, I love Jerry Clower. And I know a lot of his stories by heart, but I still love to listen to him. And I start laughing before he ever gets started talking. When he talks about whopping them biscuits on that counter and you hear them whopping all over town because the women quit making homemade biscuits and started opening canned biscuits. And when you talk about uh, <clears throat> they gave Marcel the beer joint and when you talk about shoot up in here amongst us, it just cracks me up. I love to laugh. In our text that we will read to you momentarily, God has caused the children of Israel to be set free and return to their homeland, their promised land. Actually, I'm going to read the text last because I hope we don't ever have church the usual way again. Amen. God has caused the children of Israel to be set free and to return to their homeland, which is their promised land. It's a culmination with what began as a simple direction to a man named Abram and his family when he said, get out of your country, leave your friends and family, and go to a place I will show you. Abram, later Abraham, by faith, obeyed God, and he never knew where he was going. As he traveled, he came to a certain land inhabited by the Canaanites, and there God spoke to him and said, Unto thy seed will I give this land. Now it began to be a refrain heard very often as Abraham journeyed. He said, The generations that will be born of you will be the, as the stars in the heaven and the sand in the seashore, which I'm working on a message about that. He said, There's going to be a great nation born from you and will inhabit this land that I'm going to give you. And in thy seed will all the nations of the earth be blessed. But there was a big problem in the Lord giving Abraham all these promises. Dude didn't have no kids. And he and his wife Sarah kept getting older. And God kept making them that same promise. And they kept getting older. 
And during this, this, this journey they're on, God kept making the same promise. And sometimes they failed. Sometimes they failed to believe like they ought to believe. And they even failed in action more than once. Can I get a witness? Amen. Trying to fulfill God's promises for him. And trying to protect themselves. They lied. They were afraid. They had relationships they shouldn't have. All while waiting on the promise to come to pass. Abraham was 75 years old when he left Haran following God to, only, to who knows where. He was 86 when he and Sarah lost faith and got impatient. And she came up with the idea for him to hook up with Hagar in the biblical sense. And they had Ishmael, 11 years of promise. He was 99 years old when God gave him circumcision as the sign of the covenant between God and Abraham and Abraham's seed. That was the children he was going to have with Sarah and she was 90 years old. In Genesis 18, three angels appeared to Abraham in the plains of Mamre. And after feeding the angels and giving them to drink, they spoke unto Abraham in Genesis 18 and 9. And they said unto him, Where is Sarah thy wife? And he said, Behold, in the tent. And he said, I will certainly return unto thee according to the time of life. And lo, Sarah thy wife shall have a son. And Sarah heard it in the tent door which was behind him. She was eavesdropping, listening at the door to the men talk. Now Abraham and Sarah were old. I guess in the Bible it was politically correct to call people old. <laughs> you ain't supposed to do it now. Abraham and Sarah were old and well stricken in age. That means they showed how old they were when you looked at them. And it ceased to be with Sarah after the manner of women. Y'all know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Therefore, Sarah laughed within herself, saying, After I am waxed old, shall I have pleasure, my Lord, that's her husband, being old also. Now, I feel like after having read this passage and some more passages, part of the reason why Sarah laughed is because not only were they old, they were too old. I believe it. And the Lord said unto Abraham, Wherefore did Sarah laugh, saying, Shall I of a surety bear a child which am old? I who am old, will I bear a child? She cracked up. There's really nothing wrong with that. If some of y'all got a word from the Lord that you was going to have a child, you'd laugh too. And if you told anybody, they'd probably laugh at you. But the Lord said, why did Sarah laugh? Verse 14, is anything too hard for the Lord? That preaches good until you have to live it. But I'm going to ask you this morning, is there anything too hard for the Lord? There's nothing. That's too hard for the Lord. As a matter of fact, there's only one impossibility that the Bible gives us about the Lord, and that is He cannot lie. Right. Right. Look at here what he says, Brother Skipper, I agree with you. At the time appointed, I will return unto thee according to the time of life, and Sarah shall have a son. Then Sarah lied and said, I didn't laugh. For she was afraid. And he said, no, nay, but thou didst laugh. 
There's a hormone in our body called cortisol. It is, among other things, increased when we feel stressed. Proverbs 17 and 22 says, A merry heart doeth good like a medicine. And once again, we are reminded that science is running behind Scripture and the powerful truths in Scripture. Because I looked it up. And according to the website neuroleadership.com, when we laugh, it swaps the cortisol in our bloodstream and replaces it with highly sought after chemicals in the brain, dopamine, oxytocin, and endorphins. That's what happens when you laugh. The hormone that makes you stress decreases and dopamine, oxytocin, and endorphins I'm just going to say this because I'm really trying not to just lose my mind. But God made your body to live. Mm. Dopamine can enhance learning, motivation, and attention or focus. Oxytocin is considered to be by many called the empathy hormone or the bonding chemical. And when it oxytocin enters the bloodstream, it creates feelings of relatedness or connection. And it causes us, it causes us to want to be unified and to care for others. And endorphins trigger feelings of pleasure which increase our ability to endure. It was God who told Abraham to call his son's name Isaac, Genesis 17 and 19. The Lord told Abraham, you're going to name your son Isaac because Isaac's name means he laughs or laughter. And this is of course referring to when they laughed at the promise that can't happen because it's too late, because we are both old and dried up. It's because of laughter that said, God, you waited too long to bring this to pass. It was a good idea when you came up with it, but we just can't do it now. And it's funny. Laughter changes us, and it changes us for the better. Because it causes us to be more receptive to learning, to be more motivated, and to be more focused. It causes us to want to be unified and to care for others, and it triggers feelings of pleasure. People that laughed were proven in a study to be able to endure pain 15% more than people that did not laugh. Ladies and gentlemen, I will tell you that God gave us the gift of laughter. And in the Bible and to his family and to us, Isaac would forever be a reminder of who we are and who God is. Sometimes you're looking for a miracle and all you need to do is hear the funny joke. Or read laughter the best medicine in the Reader's Digest. Oh, if y'all don't know who the Reader's Digest is, we got problems. Life in the United States, laughter is the best medicine. Humor and uniform, they're all funny. Genesis 21, and the Lord visited Sarah as he had said, and the Lord did unto Sarah as he had spoken. For Sarah conceived and bare Abraham a son in his old age at the at the set time of which God had spoken to him. Oh, I'm feeling it again, man. Can I tell somebody, God is not the least bit concerned with your time clock. 
He is not least bit impatient. He's not scared. He's running out of time. He made time, for goodness sakes. And if he needs some more, he can stop the earth. He can stop the sun. He can stop the moon. He can stop the clock. And Abraham called the name of his son that was born unto him whom Sarah bare to him, Isaac. He called him laughter. And Abraham circumcised his son Isaac being eight days old, just like God told him to. And Abraham was a hundred years old. God made the promise when he was 75, 25 years. And Abraham was a hundred years old when his son Isaac was born unto him. Verse number six. And Sarah said, God hath made me to laugh so that all that hear will laugh with me. In the beginning, she laughed because it was ridiculous. She laughed because, whoo, she laughed because it was impossible. She laughed because it was a dream that had died. She laughed because it was too late and the evidence was right in front of them. But when Isaac was born, when he shouldn't have been, when God turned life back for Abraham and he turned life back for Sarah because his word is going to be true, then, then she laughed. Then she chortled. Then she chuckled from deep down inside of her because uh, the laugh was on her. I should have never doubted God. I should have never not believed. I should have never let my faith die because I know he's God and look what he did. You hear this preacher right now. You look all around you. You see miracles from the front to the back, from side to side. There are men and women here who the world wrote you off, the enemy wrote you off, but God still believed in you. And she said that everybody... God made me laugh so that everybody that hears what he did for me will laugh with me. How does that happen? Well, when you laugh, oxytocin is released into your bloodstream and it makes you want to be with other people and it makes you want to share what's funny and it makes you want to connect. And be unified. Science is just learning what God gave us a long time ago. And she said, oh, I feel this in the Holy Ghost. Would y'all stay with me? Y'all stay with me? Look here. And she said, who? Who would have said unto Abraham that Sarah, oh, dried up, broke down, unattractive, would be nursing a brand new baby. Yeah. <laughs> Who would have said it? Nobody. But everybody would have laughed. But look what she's got. Yeah. Sister Leanne, if God makes you a promise, it's going to happen. If God makes you a promise, it's going to happen. If God makes you a promise, it's going to happen. Who would have thought it, but it happened? Who would have thought it, but it happened? Ecclesiastes 3 and 1. To everything, there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven. Verse 4 says, a time to weep and a time to laugh. Now, based upon what I've told you so far, if it's my season to laugh, 
Brother Jerry, I know I'm a little bit touched up here. But if it's my if it's my season to laugh, then instead of calling it my season of laughter, Brother Derek, you know what I'm going to call it? A season of healing. Because it is not just something the Lord wanted me to be able to do, but laughing has a purpose. Ooh, I feel the Holy Ghost. And you know what that is? You know what that pur purpose is? Uh, when I start laughing, it starts changing my mind. Uh, it starts changing the makeup of who I am. Uh, it starts making me think differently. And it starts making me stop wanting to be by myself. Uh, and it starts making me stop wanting to be a victim. And it starts making me stop wanting to hate everybody. And I want to love old folks. Uh, and I want to get closer to people. And I want to learn from God. And I want pleasure. But I heard in the book that there's a place where pleasure is forevermore. And the psalmist said, in his presence, there is fullness of joy. And at his right hand. You know what I'm learning, Brother David? Get where we are right now yeah. and stay there. Yes. That's what the power of the Holy Ghost is. It's yeah. not circumstantial based. No. That's why you turn to hell every which way but loose. When you laugh a little bit when you're supposed to cry. Yeah. Because the enemy doesn't determine my seasons. Yes. My circumstances don't determine my seasons. Acts the 17 chapter says, my seasons have already been set by God. The Lord has determined when my winter, spring, summer, or fall would be. And he sent me to tell you today that the season of laughter, the season of healing is upon you. Amen. 2023, the year of laughter. I wish you had enough faith to turn to somebody right now or maybe just stand up on this side and holler to somebody on that side because y'all don't turn to your neighbor very good. <laughs> but I wish somebody over here would stand up and holler at somebody over there and say, it's going to be all right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Excuse me, it's holiday. I forgot. <laughs> Blessed are ye, Luke 6 and 21, that hunger now, for you shall be filled. Blessed are they that weep now, for you shall laugh. So we got, got it in our mind that I cry and I stop crying. Mm -mm. I don't just stop crying, but I laugh. Why do I laugh? Why did he make me laugh? Because it heals me. The Holy Ghost sent me today to tell us it seems like the time of the promise has passed. We have waited so long that it's laughable to think that it is going to happen. But God sent us a reminder today called Isaac. And he told us that the fulfillment of his promise will not only make us better, but it'll make those around us better. Yes. That, the, that the laughter of the unbelievable will become the laughter of the fulfilled. That with the birth of the promise will be the accompaniment of the healing waves of laughter. Let me tell you something about laughing. It's contagious. You start cracking up next to somebody just die laughing and they don't know what's going on, they're going to laugh with you or laugh at you. Either way, they're going to laugh. Let me tell you something. If you've ever got in trouble in school before, 
because you got cracked up at some dummy across the way or maybe the teacher. You can't stop it. You ever got in trouble? I told you to stop laughing. You can't. I hope somebody's hearing what I'm saying. 2023, the year of laughter. But I thought it was going to be the year of this. I thought it was going to be the year of that. You understand that the Lord first wants to heal your mind. And you thought it was coming out of heaven in lightning bolts. Remember, we're still trying to get delivered from that. Or you thought it. God help me right now was in a cop picking bottle of pills or, or you thought it was in a doctor's office somewhere or you thought it was here that and the other until you laughed real good don't do anything else I'm so sorry if I offended your sense and sensibility but I want to let you know if you ain't gone to the Lord first you're already out of order if you're here on Wednesday nights, you know good and cotton picking well that I don't believe you don't ever take medicine. But if you ain't tried Jesus first, save your money. And not only that, this is the Holy Ghost right now. This ain't something I'm wanting to do, but this is the Holy Ghost. Not only that, you might save your family. You'll save your job. Because you start down the pathway of the world. It don't stop. That's right. Now, how in the world did we just get tight as a drum? Because we like it when we can do, woo, long as I ain't talking about nothing you're struggling with. Come on. Come on. That's true. But the Holy Ghost told me to come tell you today, y'all know it's got to be from God. I ain't that brave to preach on the year of laughter. Don't even make no sense. Does now. We sing a song, when you've tried everything and everything's failed, try Jesus. That's the wrong way. I'm calling you to try Jesus first. Do you realize what I'm preaching is the answer to your problem may already be inside of you. It just, oh, it just needs, it needs to be turned loose. And listen, listen what the world wants to do to you. They want you whining. They want you crying. They want you bickering. They want you fussing and cussing. And they want you not trust nobody. You mean to tell me that the solution to my dilemma might be I just need to laugh? So I'm going to ask you a question right now. How long has it been, been since you laughed till you got sick? How long has it been since you laughed till you got a sick headache? How long has it been since you got to rolling around on the floor and couldn't even set up anymore because you were just cackling and laughing like you about to lay an egg? Huh? Huh? I bet you you know quicker how long it's been since you was glooming and dooming because you didn't have enough money to pay all your bills. I'm, I'm bringing her home, baby. But the Lord just told me to come by and tell you, he's got a plan that works. And it's in you. It's in you. Okay. All right, baby. Are you singing by yourself or are they helping you? Y'all get your tails up here. <laughs> All of you, get up here. Brother Shannon, Brother Ronnie, Sister Miss Jane, y'all better hold on to yourself.
because you're about to lose your mind just like me. <laughs> Sister Heidi, I'd like for you to throw up Psalms 126 and 1 for me. Let me minister to you just a minute. Don't get to watching them. They done been up there a thousand times. Ain't nothing new happening. That's right. When the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion. That means when the Lord decided that his people would no longer be captive. When the Lord decided to set them free. Because you know something, Sister Maria? The enemy only holds you because the Lord says he can. Oh, y'all better be ready for this. How many go to recovery on Thursdays? Raise your hand. Y'all fixing to love this. I ain't making it up. I promise. I ain't making this up trying to get amens and hollers from people. I'm about to, this is about to blow your mind. Yeah. When the Lord said, it's time to be free, we were like them that dream. Now, what that means is, literally, it means It seemed too good to be true. Oh, it ain't got good yet. Y'all just wait here. I know some people struggle with how much, how much focus we put on recovery. Stop struggling with it because you ain't fighting me. You're fighting God. It's God brought it to us. Because everybody you know is in recovery. Even those of you that don't like it, you need to be there. Because you're messed up. It just is what it is. I think that's why so many people attack it is because they're scared of it. Because they got to be honest. They got to be real. Okay. We were, we were like them that dream. Do you understand what preacher is preaching to you this morning? That the things God is going to do in your life are so good, yes, yes. so beautiful, and so powerful, and so longed for, that it's going to seem like you're dreaming. Yes. Oh, yeah. Except the Greek word for we were like them that dream actually means, that I preached this too, and it was good. I was going to use it here first until I saw the next part. It literally means fat or fleshy. Remember I preached some time ago about increasing your capacity? How the fat was going to break the yoke? I just thought, boy, I'm going to use this and that the next time I preach it somewhere else. Until I saw the next line. And it says, the same word is translated in other places, recover. So the phrasing could be, I'm quoting the commentator right now, the phrasing could be, when the Lord turned again our captivity, we were like such men that have recovered. Yeah. Huh? I, woo, I wish there was somebody in the house that could teach us what it looks like to be recovered. Yeah. Yeah. We all know what somebody looks like that's under needing recovery, yeah. but what does it look like when you realize you woke yeah. up and the chains fell off of you and the urges were gone from you and your mind was clear and your heart was holy. Recovery is a dream come true. And this is where it happens at. You can't make this stuff up, man. I promise I'll show you in the Bible. Look here. Then was our mouth filled with laughter. When they realized it wasn't a dream... 
when they realized they were recovered, they started laughing. And singing. And then, y'all sit down just a minute. I want them to be able to see me that won't stand up in the back. I'm just teasing. There was only like 10 standing. Look at here. Let me tell you. you should, don't look, read that word right there. Then, when we realized it wasn't a dream, but it was real, we started laughing. You talk about flipping the script. <laughs> it felt like a dream, Brother Terrence, but it was real. Listen, listen. We started singing. That's what we did. Then said they among the heathen. What does that mean? I hoped you would ask. You know what it means, Brother Johnny? It means their freedom from captivity has only been promised by God. They're still among the heathen. But they got a hold of something by faith that caused them to start laughing because when, as soon as God says it, it's got to become reality. So in a manner of speaking, if you'll allow me to say it this way, Sarah was pregnant for 25 years. And when they started laughing and when they started singing, the heathen said, the heathen said, the not religious, the sinner, the pagan, the idolater, their captor said, the Lord has done great things for them. So not only does your laughter and your singing heal you, deliver you, and testify of your faith in the promise of God, it lets the enemy know everything's changed. The Lord had done great things for them. The Lord had done great things for us whereof we are glad. And we're showing it by laughing. Turn again our captivity, O Lord, as the streams in the south. Hear me now, precious, beautiful child of God. They that sow in tears shall reap in joy. He that goeth forth and weepeth Bearing precious seed. Let me tell you why that was happening. Real fast. You know why the Bible calls it precious seed? Because here's how they got it. They planted their crops one year. They harvested all their crop. And then they just kept a part of it for seed. And sold the rest. But when they had a bad year. Or they had critters get in it. Or they had some problem. They didn't have anything left but the one little seed. So when they took that seed out and planted it. All their eggs was in that basket. And you know something, Brother Kendall? They planted it with tears because it's all I got. It's all I got. They went out with a sack of seed weeping. Lord, if this don't come up, I'm done. If this don't come up, I got nothing left. And the, the word of the Lord said, He that goeth forth and weepeth, bearing precious seed, shall doubtless. You know what that means? For sure. No doubt about it. Guarantee. What? On 100. 100. Come again rejoicing. Reckon what does that look like? I'm going to say laughing and sing it. And he went out to the field with a sack of seed, Brother David, but he came back rejoicing, pulling a wagon load of grain behind him because you might have wept. But the book says, Woo! Weeping may endure for the night, 
but joy cometh in the morning. Sarah said, God made me laugh. You know how he made me laugh? He kept his promise. And you know how I know he kept his promise to you? Because here you are. And the enemy thought he had you beat. And the enemy thought he had you killed. And the enemy thought he had you destroyed. But here I am. Get ready. Y'all got to come in it now. Y'all got to bring it. Come on. A hand of fear. A hand of fear. Grip the crowd one day. Come on, stand with me. When the doctor, when the shook, doctor his shook his head. Shook his head.
doesn't believe what I just preached. You can't stay like you are. You can't keep responding like you've always responded. There's a miracle with your name on it in this house today. I did not, I did not preach for a response. I did not preach so you would respond. I preached so you would believe it. Did you know your tears weren't meant to destroy you? But they're the water your seed's been planted with. And you might still be living in the enemy's land, but you're on your way home. The word of the Lord came by today to say, start acting like you're delivered. And how do delivered people act? They laugh and they sing. This song, I don't know how old it is, but it's like 25 years old now. Maybe older than that. But it says a hand of fear gripped the crowd one day at Jairus' home when the doctor turned to the family and said, there's no more hope, she's gone. You could hear the mother's heart break. You could hear them cry and mourn because she was just 12 years old. But somewhere out in the distance, outlined against the sun, they saw somebody walking toward them yeah. on a mission from heaven. They said, somebody's coming. But what they didn't know, there was a promise. Do you, but this is not about, Brother Blake said, it's not about hype. This is about will you believe it? Yes. Will you believe that this is the year of healing? That this is the year of laughter. This is the year that you, when he turned your morning into dancing. Now here directly, I'm going to my mama's to eat some dinner. Because my brother, who didn't come to church today, even though I bought him some church clothes for Christmas, <laughs> is going to make the best peas you ever laid a lip on. But I'm not leaving until somebody says, I believe the word. It's my promise. And it might be one year, and it might be 25 years, but it's coming. It's coming. So I'm going to go. Please don't. This is not literal. This is figurative. You know what Sarah should have done? She should have went to the maternity store. And she should have filled her closet full of baby mama clothes. Because the Lord said, you're going to have a son. And she laughed because it was crazy. But then she laughed because crazy became her reality. Take it off. Joy of the Lord falling, rest on me, I 
Miss Jane called me a couple weeks ago and told me that they taught Jasmine a Bible study at the mission. And she said, I need to be baptized in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. We're also going to, Brother Cody's going to baptize Jeremy in Jesus' name. He's over here already ready. Oh, he's right there. That's all right. We're just excited, brother. We baptized 44 people in 2022. We're planning, we're planning on baptizing at least 52 in 2023, one a week. That's what we're believing for. I, I recently heard a, a, a statement from a pastor. They were going on about four years of baptizing at least one person every service. That's the goal. Till we're baptizing somebody every service. Amen. I don't even know if we need to say that. Maybe every day. Huh? All right. We're gonna pray for we're gonna pray for Jasmine. God has blessed her. He's worked on her. She's finding her way. She's finding her way. She didn't she thought we were just stone cold nuts when she first came around. And uh, she decided if you can't beat them, join them. So uh, let's pray for Jasmine. Lord, in the name of Jesus, we pray for Jasmine right now. God, you're going to completely heal her, deliver her. You're going to allow her to walk in freedom and wholeness and completeness. She's going to make a difference everywhere she goes because of the name of Jesus that's being applied to her life. By the power of the Holy Ghost, in the name of Jesus Christ, we declare it as if it's all ready.
Jasmine Jones, upon the profession of your faith and the teaching of the apostles, I now baptize you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Amen. some praise. Why don't you uh, grab her, grab uh, Jeremy a robe real quick and he can get dressed in the other side. Yeah, I'm just behind everything, but that's all right. It's all right. He's already, somebody got him a robe already? All right, he's been got him one. Me and you, are, we're, we're behind. This is Jeremy Busby. Um, I met him through recovery, and we instantly hit it off. Uh, we just started talking, and we just started getting together. And he's been uh, he's been through a lot, but he came here today. He said something brought him here. He had no plans of coming to church this morning. He had no plans of, of being here at all, but something called him here. And we know it's God. God's got a promise for his life. And today he's going to declare it. He's repented of his sins. And now it's time to receive the promise that's made to him. He's realized he's made for more than this. And today his life's going to change. Let's pray for Jeremy. Jeremy Busby, upon the confession of your faith and the teaching of the apostles, I now baptize you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Oh! 
Hallelujah, church. There ain't no better way to start off a year like this. Seeing two miracles happen this morning, lives changed, being set on a new direction, a new path being laid out before them. There is nothing better than to see that. Getting a word straight from heaven to set the tone for the year, this service could not have been any better than what it has been today. But to end it off, we're going to go over a few announcements. We're going to leave here this morning. We're going to leave happy. We're going to leave laughing. We're going to leave full of joy. And we're going to leave with purpose as we walk back out into that world. So today is the Secret Sister Drawing. If you put your name in, please take one out. There is no prayer meeting this Monday night. Regular prayer meeting schedule will resume next Monday. The new bread pamphlets are in the back table. Please take one if you would like. And if you don't know what that is, the bread is the word of God. And it is a plan that we have that we distribute out where it lays out what you can read every day to be able to finish the Bible in one year. So... After that, we have the church cleaning team. That's team number seven, which is Brother Cody and Sister Aaron. And next Sunday on January the 8th, Brother Jeremy Damesworth is going to be preaching for us. It's going to be a, a power-packed service. If you are someone that you know would like to receive the church text, please let Sister Amanda know. And this is really important. That's how we get information out. We have the bulletin. We have the text messages. If you're here, you get to hear the announcements. But... The main way that we communicate when we're not here in the church is through those text messages. And we actually had regular people show up this morning at 10 o'clock thinking we were having church because they didn't get the text. So please, please let Sister Amanda know that you want to sign up for that so you know everything that's going on. And also this Friday night, we're going to have the Presbyters Rally. It starts at 7.24 p.m. because we have six minutes of focused prayer before service starts at 7.30. It's going to be at Jesus Name Tabernacle in Carothersville, and Brother Sheeran is going to be preaching that. There is an aftershock for the youth. It's going to be ages 12 to 18 at the Carothersville Rec Center. Uh, any youth that wants to go, please let Sister Meredith or Brother Tripp know so that we can arrange transportation down there. It's going to be $8 at the door, so if you can Please do the section a favor and have exact change if you can. Other than that, uh, tomorrow it's going to be a difficult occasion. But today we learn to have joy in our heart. We learn to laugh about the situation because we know that our enemy can't get us down. So anybody that can, please be here tomorrow to support Sister Crystal and her family at the funeral. Uh, the arrangements, the visitation starts at 11 and the funeral is to follow at 1 p.m., and it's going to all be here at the church. And Sister Crystal, we all love you. We want to support you. We want to be here for you. So we just, we just want this day to be as easy as it possibly can, and we're going to love you through it. I see. Yes, sir. That is all the announcements that we had. We have any birthdays or anniversaries in the crowd today? Anybody? All right, if everybody could be seated for a minute. Birthday. Sister Callie, we take credit. Give the five. If we could have all the birthdays stand. Oh. Everybody that had a birthday, if you could please stand, we're going to sing happy birthday to you. A happy birthday to you. A happy birthday.
I know today if there was ever a word that I could grab a hold of, it was the word that we heard today. We should be we should be searching for something in every message that's preached across this pulpit, but I know for a fact that today's was for me. And I hope that it's for you too. But if we could all stand in the house this morning, we're going to be dismissed in Jesus' name. Brother Terrence, would you pray us out, please?